I'm Andy Lee. This is the Bite of Bread. It's a weekly Bible study reading plan. We get together, we study together, we dig deep into the Word and find the life inside the Word of God and encourage each other in the process. Hey, Evelyn, good morning. Thank you for joining. Selena, good morning. I'm running kind of late this morning. I just got so caught up in working on um, what I'm sharing today that I, I missed the time. Anyway, so glad you could be here with me. Leah, good morning. So happy Monday. Happy May. May 1st. Can you believe May 1st? Um, it is summertime here in North Carolina, which is what I do like about the South is it um, summer comes quick. So good morning, Deb. Good to see you. And Mary, Erica Wooster. Good morning. Good to see you today. Hey guys, so new reading plan today. We are focused on waiting on God. I know nobody likes that word to wait. Hey Stephanie, good morning. So yep, we're going to be talking about waiting on God. And today the scripture is so cool. It's about waiting on Him coming back. Carol Ann Ferris, I missed you. Good to see you this morning. Glad you're with us. Yeah, it's hot in Florida, I'm sure, because it's hot here, so I'm sure it's really hot in Florida. Um, oh, really hot and humid. So you guys hold my hands. Let's get prayed up so we can get started this morning. Venus Schrader, my sister, good to see you this morning. Hold my hand, Marie Brown, I'm about to pray. Hold my hand. Father, we praise you, we love you, we thank you for a new day, a new day. Just in your mercies are new every morning. The slates wipe clean. We have a new day to start. We have, we have many opportunities in front of us today, Lord. What are you inviting us to today? Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for this word and this promise God, help me teach it in a way that just um, goes a little bit deeper, helps us understand it a little bit more. Thank you for your word and that it's alive, it's active, and it's it's been around for a long time and it's not going away. We love you and we praise you and we give you all the glory. And God's beautiful people said, Amen. Amen. So here we go. Okay, I got my coffee. Do you have your coffee? I'll show you my coffee mug this morning. It's the one that says I need mascara and caffeine. I did. This weekend I worked in the yard and oh my gosh, I need to work in the yard more because I killed myself. I wore myself out. <laughs> I'm out of shape. And I'm getting a little bit older, so working in the yard, you know how it just kills your back and your shoulders, and yep, that was me, but hey, I got some work done this weekend, had to take a nap yesterday, so I'm still recovering. Hey, um, Pastor D, good to see you this morning. Thanks for joining. So this morning, we're in Hebrews 9, 27 and 28. So Hebrews 9, 27, 28, we're talking about waiting on God. If you go to my website, wordsbyandylee.com, I've done it a little bit differently this week. I'm only posting once. It's a really long post today, and in that post is this reading plan. And I've got a printable, so you can click on the link for the printable for the reading plan. You can print it off with some extra questions for each scripture. So if you want to have a little bit more to help you study and dig in deep, and we'll talk about those questions some on our um, broadcast too, or time together in the morning. So, wordsbyandylee.com, you can go, you can get that printable, print it off, and then you'll have some of these questions, as well as the, um, the list of scriptures we're doing today, or this week. So let's get busy. Let's get to Hebrews 9, 27 and 28. So in Hebrews 9, can I just tell you, nobody knows who wrote Hebrews for sure. And there's the possibility that Priscilla wrote it, which I think is really cool. Go girl power. You know, I'm always, always about that. So Hebrews 9, 27 through 28, the author writes in Hebrews 9, 27 and 28, just as man is destined to die once, 
and after that to face judgment. So Christ was sacrificed once in so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people and he will appear a second time. Oh, can I just get a hallelujah, glory? Are we excited about that or what? We're so excited he's coming back. He will come back. He will appear a second time. Good morning, Shelly. Good to see you. He will appear a second time not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Did you get the very end of that? He's coming back for those who are waiting for him. So let me just ask you, are you waiting for Jesus to come back? Deb says, glory, yes. Are you waiting for Jesus to come back? And if you are, that's a good thing because he's coming back for those who are waiting on him. Let's look at this scripture a little bit. So the, the first part of that verse, 27, just as man is destined to die once. So the very first time, I know I've read this scripture before, but years ago, hey Priscilla, good morning. Years ago, I heard um, Joyce Meyer use this scripture to say, this is proof that there's no such thing as reincarnation, that we got one shot, that we've got one life, that we've got this one chance to make a difference in this world, that we're going to live, we're destined to die once, and then to go before the throne and to be judged. So that this is, you know, if you've got friends, you've got people you're, you're talking to and trying to, to bring to faith, then that's a scripture, of course, until they believe that the scripture makes a difference. It may not weigh much, but it can help you to know that the scripture does tell us we're only going to live here once. We're not reincarnated. We live here once, we die, and then we go to the throne to judgment. So that's the first thing we can see in this um, scripture. And none of us like that word judgment, do we? No, we don't like that word judgment at all. The Greek is crisis, K-R-I-S-I-S, or krisis, perhaps. Um, it's a place of condemnation. It's a place of, of final judgment. But let's, we've got to connect all these scriptures together. We don't want to take one scripture out of context. We've got to put it all together. Lori, good morning. Good to see you. Turn with me to Romans 8.1. So we just read that we're all destined to, to live one life, to die, and then to go before the judgment um, throne of God. A place that could be a place of condemnation or a final judgment. But Romans 8, verse one, anybody know it? Do you know it by heart? It's a good one. I bet you know it when I start saying it. So Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore there is now no condemnation. Right? You got it? You can probably say the word rest of it. You probably, probably got it memorized. Um, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in who? In Christ Jesus. There is now no condemnation. So no place of judgment, that condemning place of judgment for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. And Romans 8.31, I just love Romans 8. We just need to stay. We just need to stay in Romans 8 one week and just or one month and just stay in there for a while. But Romans 8 31 says, What then should we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring a charge against us? Against those whom God has chosen. It is God who justifies. Who is that who condemns? Christ Jesus who died. More than that. Who was raised to life. I'm in Romans 8. In, in case you go, what in the heck? Where is she reading? I'm in Romans 8, 31, um, 33. Who will bring any charge against us whom God has chosen? Who's going to bring that charge against us? Because it says that, that Jesus 
is the one now who's going to judge, but Jesus is the one who's died for us. He went to all, he went to all that work and died for us. And therefore, those of us who are in Jesus and who have simply, by the work of faith, my friends, nothing we do, but just by our trusting and our work of faith, we are no longer judged, but we are saved we are delivered from that judgment and from that condemnation because of Christ and what he's done. Debbie Johnson, good morning. This is some deep, heavy stuff, but gosh, we need to know this. This is, this is our salvation message here. This is our hope. This is our promise. Um, and I have to read. I want to read in 2 Corinthians 5.10. I know I'm all over the scripture. I hope you're taking notes this morning. 2 Corinthians 5.10 also says for we all must for we must all appear before the judgment seat you said oh wait a minute wait a minute i thought we didn't have to be judged but listen this is this is for the believers here for we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body whether good or bad so i believe that believers and non-believers we're all going to end up there before the throne of God when it's time. And and for those of us who are saved in Christ, there's no condemnation, but we are going to receive our rewards at that time for what we've done. All these things that, that God's put in front of us. And I, I said earlier, this as I prayed today, invited us to do. Did you know that he invites us to participate with him, to work with him, to do good things, to love those in front of us, to help those in front of us. So we get to participate in this divine, um, these eternal things every single day. We have this opportunity. So we know that Christ um, in Hebrews 9:11. It says he was sacrificed once and for all. We have to understand this is like, you know, our brain is like, I can't do this. The whole thought of sacrifice and, and the blood and what was needed. But that was the law. That was what was put, um, what God had given them so that they could have relationship with him. They would bring the lamb. They would bring the bull. They would bring the ram. They would bring the animals for sacrifice. The sacrifice the healing was in the blood, and Jesus himself did that for us with his blood. Leviticus, if you want to look it up, I'm not going to read it this morning, but Leviticus 16.21, if you read Leviticus 16, it tells everything the priest had to do, where he had to put the blood, where all of that, all that they had to do to the sacrifice that had to be made so that their sins could be forgiven, the sins of the priest and the sins of the people, so that they could be in right relationship with God. But the scripture, going back to our scripture, Hebrews 9, 27 and 28, says that, um, so Christ was sacrificed in verse 28. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and he will appear a second time, but not to bear sin. But when he was on the cross, he it says he bore our sin. He carried our sin. In the Old Testament, in Leviticus, when the priests are sacrificing the animal for their sins, it says that they put their hands on the animal, on the head of the animal, to transfer the sins of the priest and the sins of the people to that animal that's going to be sacrificed. So that is what Christ did. He took on, he transferred all of our sins, our present, our past, <laughs> ones to come. He took up on all that. He bore that. He, he had it so that he would die and through his blood we would be saved we would be made right so that we could be in the holy of holies in the presence of god and we become what we become the temple of god and the holy spirit lives within us so he 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 now it says when jesus comes back he's not going to come to bear 
sins, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. He's going to bring salvation. He's going to take us home, all of those who are waiting for him. I believe, personally, I believe it's not just the people that are waiting for him to come the second time, but anybody waiting for him. I believe that includes his Jewish people, Israel, who are waiting for him to come. Many are waiting for him to come the first time, but I believe when they see him coming, and though it's going to be the second time, when they see him coming, they're going to realize that this is the second time that he's come. I think they're going to know when they see him coming. Hey, Mark, good morning. Good to see you. So we're in Hebrews 9, 27, 28. We're talking about waiting on God. And this is the thing, that Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back for all of those who are waiting on him. We're waiting. That word waiting is, is a Greek word that means we're waiting with hope. We're waiting with assurance. We're not just hanging around going, this is never, ever, ever going to happen. No, we know it's going to happen. And we have hope in that. We have this hope in, um, that it will happen. Revelation 19 11 talks about him coming with the armies of heaven on a white stallion. That he's coming to bring us home. So how would our lives change? How would our lives change? If every day we lived with the expectation of his return. Hey, Teresa, good morning. How would our lives change? This is one of the questions that I gave in the, the new um, handout I have on my website with the questions for each scripture for each day. So how would our lives change if we waited with expectation? If every day we got up and we thought, <gasps> I wonder if he's coming back today. I mean, not very many of us think about that, do we? We don't really think about it. But what would it be like if we lived with that kind of expectation? Y'all tell me. Tiny up some notes. How would your life change if you woke up every morning thinking, ooh, this could be the day. This could be the day that we see him coming in the clouds, that he's coming back to take us home. How would things change? What would you do differently if if that's how we lived every day? So I'm going to wait on some of your some of you. I know are working on typing up some answers for me on my website today. I shared three people whose faith have have just been so powerful to me. Their faith during hard times. Their faith during cancer. Their faith during chronic illness. Their faith. During um, handicaps, um, there's a young girl named Paige Snedeker. I'm not sure I said her name right, but if you go to my website, you can click on her link. So Paige is a teenager. Um, when she was a toddler, she was hit with this awful disease that, that paralyzed her. She can't breathe without help um, with the respirator. She's paralyzed, she's deaf, and she's legally blind, but she's an artist and she's an author, and she writes children's books, and she, she's an artist for children's books, and she's just amazing, and she has a blog where she writes about her struggles and yet her faith in God. Another one, another friend of mine, Erin Elizabeth Austin, also have her link up too. She has chronic illness and yet puts a magazine out for other people with chronic illness and encouraging them um, it's called Broken But Priceless Min Ministries. So, Venus has an unspeakable joy to meet Jesus. If you woke up every day knowing he was going to come back, our focus on what we believe to be important would suddenly change. I agree, Teresa. I think it really would. We'd have this eternal vision. We might end up becoming just crazy people, telling people about Jesus, right? I mean, things would really change if we thought, oh my gosh, she's coming Tomorrow, I want to read you something that a good friend of mine wrote. He put it on Facebook. His name is Bruce Brady. Um, Rachel Martinez, good to see you. Bruce has terminal cancer. Bruce has been fighting cancer for a long time. He is just like the most faithful man, faith believer of God I've ever met. And this is what he wrote. Let me read it to you. One of the most important and best days of my life was the day I was told I have terminal cancer. The realization that no human can do anything to save my life 
caused me to rely completely on the Lord. And my life has been so much better since. Yes, I still have the cancer, but he is showing me what truly matters in life. There are so many things we pursue on this earth that result in emptiness. Relationships are the only important thing. Relationships with him and people. Join me in experiencing the unequivocal joy that comes from an intimate relationship with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's from my friend Bruce Brady. The scripture he used with Psalm 90 verse 12, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. I'm going to close this morning with a little bit from a book. I, I just, I'm reading bits and pieces of it to tell you the truth, but I did give it away and Debbie Johnson won it and she really enjoyed it. It's called Choosing Real by Becca Jane Pogue. And in this, in this chapter, she has lost her father. Um, her father's passed away. It's the first Christmas without him. She was very close to him. And so you know how hard those first holidays are without someone who you love. Hey, Ellen, good morning. I'm glad you're with us this morning. So this is what she writes about going going to, to Christmas. And well, I'll just, let me get you there. She and her family had traveled to um, his family, her husband's family for Christmas morning. And she's just so, so sad. And she says, I, I pleaded. I'm feeling sad and scared and small. I miss my dad. I don't feel like celebrating. So would you please be near? Would you bring a reminder of my dad this Christmas? Would you speak however you want? And could it have something to do with my dad's favorite phrase, enjoy the journey? Maybe tangibly, like on a ginormous um, plaque. Anyway, so she's funny. She's really cute. Um, so she they get to the house. They're opening presents, and she gets a present. She gets a present from her sister-in-law, that is a silver-plated bookmark with her father's favorite saying, um, "Enjoy the journey" on the front, and then on the back of it, somehow that sister-in-law had scanned from his journal the words. Um, the words, I love you so much, Dad, in his own handwriting. She had scanned that, and she had it somehow placed on that bookmark. And, of course, the author, um, Becca Jane Pope, just, you know, bawls, just cries and, you know, falls apart because God, God, our God, had given her this tangible answer to that prayer that she had prayed just minutes or an hour, you know, a little bit ago, she prayed for this tangible sign of her daddy and how much he loved her. And God had given it to her. Can I just say, God already had that in place. You know, I mean, the sister-in-law, that was, she had worked on doing that. It had taken her a while to do that. God already knew Becca's heart before she asked. And he knows your heart too. That's kind of God. He is. He is a God who loves us tangibly. He knows everything we need, everything we want. He has gone to such great lengths so that we can be with him for eternity. But until then, while we're waiting, he is faithful to be beside us, to be in us, to give us those tangible signs of his love and faithfulness and joy in the journey as we wait on him. I just want to pray you up this morning. Jennifer, good morning. Good to see you. I just want to pray you up and pray that you get some tangible signs or reminders that he's coming back as we wait on him. Hold my hands. Lord, we love you and praise you. Jesus, you are, you are, you are everything. <laughs> you are our God. You are our Savior. You have gone to such great lengths. So that when you come back the second time, you have you are taking us home. You are bringing salvation for all of us who are waiting on you. Oh, Lord, help us share with others about you so they can be waiting on you, too. So that when you do come in those clouds, when you do come with the army of God, and when you are riding that white stallion, and you come to take us home, 
that they can go home with you too, Lord. Give us that hunger. Give us that desire to share with others around us. This is life or death. <laughs> this is life or death. And we want them to choose life. Today, we choose life, Lord. We choose your love. Give us joy in the journey. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Carol Ann Ferris, perhaps today. Amen. You just never know. Maybe someday I'll be doing this Facebook Live thing and we'll just all disappear together. How cool would that be to start floating up in my kitchen? Anyway, thank you for joining. I hope that encouraged you today. You can go to my website, wordsbyindylee.com. You can get the Body Bread Reading Plan. You can read the post for this week that's for the whole week. So it's a little bit longer. It's a little bit deeper. And it also has a printable where you can print off the reading plan and some extra questions for the plan. Thank y'all for joining me. Y'all have a great day. Go out there and be the threat to the enemy that you are. You are precious. You are beloved and you are powerful because of Jesus. Y'all have a great day. Mwah! I see you tomorrow. And yeah, let's see. On tomorrow, we're going to be, let me see, we're going to be reading Psalm 41 through 30. I'm excited to be doing this with you. I'm glad you've been encouraged, Stephanie. Thank you for joining. See y'all tomorrow. Bye.